You know, all the console players are playing Guilty Gear Strive right now. But us PC only players have to wait a few days for no reason. So I searched my brain chasm for as many different fighting games that I could think of and asked myself, which of these games is the right game for me to play the day before Strive comes out? And this game came to mind. Now, if I said Naruto fighting game to most players, they probably wouldn't even know this existed. When, in fact, there is actually a real fighting game with Naruto characters in it. And it is the Clash of Ninja series, also known as Gekito Ninja Taisen in Japan. The latest English release was Clash of Ninja 3 for the Wii. However, there were several Japan-only versions of the game that came out after it, and the community has since created several mods to the game, including one that converts the later games into English. Now, the latest version of the game is Gekito Ninja Tyson Special, but that game changed a lot, and the community just doesn't really play it that much. So the version I'm playing is Gekito Ninja Tyson 4, which is the latest game that stays true to the basic system mechanics. However, I am playing a modded version called Super Gekito Ninja Tyson 4, which is a fan-made mod pack that has various balance changes. And that's what we're playing today, Super Gekito Ninja Tyson 4. And so I'd like to give a brief rundown on what this game is, what makes it unique, and why you might want to play it yourself. So first of all, it's for the GameCube. This is a 3D fighter. You hold left or right to walk, and you can double tap a direction to dash that direction. And if you hold forward during a forward run, you can run forward until you ultimately collide with your opponent. You can hold up to jump, or an upward diagonal to jump diagonally. And every character has a double jump, which you can angle also in any of those three directions. One unique thing about this game that really doesn't exist in most other fighting games is that your character does not automatically turn around to face the opponent when you cross sides. However, if you try to walk forward, you will walk away from them. But if you try to walk toward them, your character will automatically turn around to face them. This leads to some interesting scenarios where you can actually attack the wrong direction and some characters can use this to their advantage to get away very quickly and depending on your character this might for some reason make some of your attacks unblockable so if you're facing away from the opponent some of your attacks just can't be blocked for no reason but that's fine the down direction does absolutely nothing there is no crouching in this game which means there is no low overhead mix up however you do have throws and you do have a guard gauge at the top of the screen around the timer, which goes down as you block hits. And if you block too much, you get guard crashed and I get a full combo. You also lose all your meter, which is very, very important in this game, which I'll get into soon. To sidestep, you press L or R. In this version of the game, you press L to go into the foreground, and R to go into the background. So if I switch sides, it's L to go into the foreground, R to go into the background. To block attacks, you just input nothing on your controller and your character will block attacks. You cannot block attacks that come from behind you, like that one. And you also cannot block throws. And you also cannot block most supers. All of these have various other counters. If he tries to throw me, I can throw break. However, throw breaks in this game are uh, quite difficult. There are only a few frames. And if your back is to the opponent and you can't block, you can always just run away. You can always sidestep, and that will cause your character to automatically turn to face the opponent. Or you can do one of your various attacks that hits behind you. So what do the buttons do? How do you attack? Well, the B button is your normal attack, and your A button is your special attack or your weapon attack. So with Tamari here, she would use her giant fan to attack. The Y button is your throw, and the X button is your super. If we go to the strings lists, you can see that you get additional attacks by pressing buttons in various sequences, and also by throwing in some directional inputs. 
So just regular B is this low kick. However, if I do forward plus B, I get a mid kick. And if I do backward plus B, I get a spinning roundhouse kick. The same is true for A attacks. The same is usually not true for the other two buttons, however. Most characters only have one throw, and most characters only have two supers. Let's talk about your super meter, the chakra meter. So as you and your opponent attack each other, you will build a little bit of meter. And some moves will also build a little bit of meter even if they whiff. In general, you build meter really, 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 really fast. So use your meter when you get it. The first use of your meter is the Y cancel. So Y is the throw button. However, if you launch the opponent into the air with a move like this, you can press the Y button to Roman cancel for 25% of your chakra to keep the combo going. And in fact, this lets you get near infinite, although there is a gravity scaling in play. This game does have true infinites, but that's fine because of substitution. So the way a substitution works is if I set the computer to attack me and I walk forward, I can press L to teleport behind or I can press R to teleport behind and attack. And this costs 75% of my chakra meter. And you can do this as soon as you get hit. So if I try to go for a combo, you can punish me with this substitution if I'm not expecting it. However, if I am expecting it, I have various ways to avoid his attack and actually punish him. In general, if they use the L button to substitute and they teleport behind you, you can throw them because throws are like one frame startup in this game. And if they use the R button to attack you, you can sidestep or jump or whatever to avoid it and then whiff punish them. So a very, very large part of this game is knowing your nearly infinite looping strings of attacks but also knowing where the opponent might try to substitute out and knowing how to punish them for trying to substitute. Tamari is very good at this because she gets a near infinite loop without having to spend any meter and it's only one attack, which means that she can basically always react to you teleporting and punish it accordingly. There are some gimmicks to these two mechanics that are quite complicated. For example, some attacks can't be Y cancelled, and you also cannot substitute during a cinematic like this. But for the most part, that's a very large portion of this game's mix-up game. And those are sort of the basics of the game. There's more to it than that, like there's a universal armor move, and there's damage scaling, and there's wake-up rolls to mix up the opponent's offense. But that's the type of stuff that I would talk about in a second video if I ever make one. For right now though, I'm just gonna wait for Guilty Gear Strive.